let's uh, move on just before I go to the first call of the day to uh, have a discussion with Ben Pyle, who's a climate researcher and writer, to reflect on this issue. And the key question, are we past peak net zero? Ben, a very good morning. Thanks for, for joining us. So uh, you may have not been listening to, thanks for coming on Ties Talk. You may have listened to Ed Gemmell there, the founder of uh, the Climate Party. He says there's huge business opportunities from uh, trying to accelerate uh, the, the pace at which we get to net zero from 2050 towards 2030. Uh, but it, we, where, we, where we dramatically differed is actually, mm. well, um, yeah, there's a huge cost to that. And uh, if business is going to invest in that, because they want to make huge profits from ordinary people. Yeah, uh, well, I commend, as you did, um, uh, him for standing with democratic, you know, putting his ideas to a democratic test, because that's the thing that's been missing from green politics for the last 20, 30, perhaps even 50 years. It's all sort of somewhat taken for granted by uh, political establishments and and mainstream political parties um, that we have to do this no matter what the, the voter thinks. Um, and it's good to see um, the green movement, as it were, finally realising the, the ideas and the principles that it wants to change society with, that it, it has quite a radical view about how society must be reorganized. Um, and, 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 now, and now it seems to be realizing that it must put those ideas to the test before they can be realized. Um, in terms of the prices, uh, I mean, these are the same. I mean, if you go back to the 2000s when all these arguments were made, um, or even the early 2000s, um, MPs were very sure that all they needed to do in order to to kickstart a green industrial revolution in the UK, was create these laws, um, these these emissions reduction targets, um, <clears throat> and these renewable energy targets. Um, and I, uh, the, the the term at the time, um, if you look through Hansard, a lot of what what MPs and, and lords were talking about was investor confidence. And so they believed that once you had this policy environment, this very draconian in in many people's views um, <clears throat> um, policy agenda. Um, the, the the green industrial revolution would just just suddenly come into being. Meanwhile, of course, uh, China joined the WTC and and uh, and became uh, the the manufacturing uh, superpower of of the east uh, of the world. Um, and many and many many um, industries from in the UK, across Europe, and even from America, just upped and oft and set up in the east um, to take advantage of much cheaper energy. Uh, prices and much lower environmental standards and, of course, uh, much lower uh, labour costs. So the green industrial revolution just hasn't happened in the UK. All that we've done is we've created an enormous market for goods and uh, and uh, items manufactured in the East. Exactly. That, that was um, the point that I made. Yes, yes. Sorry, I didn't hear the whole conversation. But this is but so 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 that there, there is no possibility of a green industrial revolution or you know to, to, to kickstart green industry here in the UK through these top down policy measures um, that 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 Ed Gemmell seems to be advocating. We've seen it, we've done it, we've run the experiment. Well, there was consensus across the political parties that that was what needed to be done, and 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 the consequence of that is now we have we, a lot. Of, uh, we've we've now got that the, the highest electricity cost in uh, in in virtually the whole of the developed world, and lots of messages coming in. Mo says we're not all in Britain PLC. Uh, Mr. Gemmell and his ilk, uh, those of us with low incomes, living hand to mouth, paying for their rip off policies, paying for the huge profits. Those investors that he refers to look he's a he's obviously a plausible business guy but uh it's quite clear that he's not thinking about hard ordinary folk uh meanwhile um there's uh one here from um uh, other messages pouring in i'll get to in a bit but i just want to ask you uh ben also lots of people uh, expressing concern in the mainstream media about these forest fires look, forest fires have happened all uh, all the time uh, over hundreds of years. Uh, in the last, uh, fifth, well, between 2000 and 2015, forest fires uh, was about 25% less than the average. And we're hearing actually many people in, in Greece, uh, sorry, leaders of Greece are admitting that it's arson that has caused some of these forest fires. Uh, and it's, it's a part of nature. How um, how worried are you that uh, these forest fires is that it, uh, do you think that's an indication that we should be more concerned about or from the data you're looking at do you think that that's that's a normal part of 
of nature and forest fires that have existed for hundreds of years? I think the same thing is true of most things that we understand as natural disasters. Um, so forest fires are, are, of course, a problem, but they tend tend to be often the consequence of, of course, arson. And even even 50 50 percent of the um, uh, fires investigated by the British police, uh, British um, uh, fire brigades turn out to have been arson. It's it's a very very high proportion. Um, you don't get very often just things spontaneously combusting in in nature um, unless there's a, a lightning strike or, or well it's not uh, spontaneous combustion. Um, but, uh, so so um, forest fires do 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 happen, but the the answer to them. Um, is proper forest management, proper land, land management. Um, but of course, the the, the, the problem is um, wildfires are incredibly picturesque, and they and they um, they're really you know they're, it's it's quite they're quite seductive, it's, it's and it's quite tempting. For media. For, that's exactly, right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and in Eastern Europe, actually, you've got farms that have been allowed to go back to scrubland that are therefore more susceptible to forest fires. Just finally, Ben, uh, just. Referring there to that previous discussion with Ed Gemmel, the leader of the Climate Party. But you look at China's emissions, and this I think is what Tony Blair has suddenly woken up to and admitted, is, I mean, the growth in emissions from China, and we've got a graph I'm going to put on screen, compared to what we in the UK produce, uh, is, is utterly extraordinary. And hopefully we'll put a, a, uh, a screenshot up now uh, showing the growth in emissions from China relative to the UK. That's actually, that graph there is the growth uh, of emissions per head. And you can see the black line, if you're not watching, if you're listening on, uh, on radio, uh, is the dramatic growth of uh, CO2 emissions per head in China, which is now some uh, 30 or 40 percent higher than the CO2 emissions per head here in the UK. So, and then there's another graph here, uh, which is the annual graph. That shows the black line, which is flatlining right at the bottom of the graph, and the growth in emissions from China, uh, total emissions, I mean, it's just, it's, I think it's sort of 30 or 40 times the emissions in the UK. And this is what Tony Blair's referred to. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, the, what the graphs show is that we've deindustrialized and we've sent our industries to to the east. That, 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 there it is. Those are the, those are the raw numbers. And what I point out quite often is that in order to, to ignore that fact, these, a lot of these statistics are really quite stark. You have to have abandon any sense of proportion. And I think we saw that really bizarre. Uh, a, a, a case of that today with with the, the UN chief Antonio Guterres saying that, that, that global warming is now going to be called global boiling and of course a few years ago he was he was talking about uh, the high temperatures being uh, and wildfires being a code red for humanity um, so you have you have to live in quite a fantasy world where these kind of these kind of charts that there's very sensible charts that you've shown there um, don't count for anything. Um, and 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 to 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 see things from uh, Antonio Guterres' uh, position, um, you have you have to you have to ignore all of the counter the the counter uh, the other opposite opinion and and to ignore the deba the very serious debates that there are. Um, fortunately, this morning also um, the new uh, new new chair of the intergovernmental panel on climate change, uh, Jim uh, Jim Skay, Professor Jim Skay from Imperial. Um, has said that we shouldn't be too alarmist about the world warming what by 1.5 degrees um, well, centigrade. That, that's that not sounds like a, a, the... a, a rare dose of common sense from anybody in the IPCC, it sounds like, Ben. Yes, um, this, this is a new thing. Thank you so much indeed, Ben, for your thoughts. Well, I look forward to speaking to you soon. That, everybody, was Ben Pyle, climate researcher, writer on many of these issues. Lots of you getting in touch.